So this mower might be a familiar sight uh, on the channel, uh, the build series that I never finished. Um, this is going to get worked on in, I don't know, a few months, well, probably like six months. Um, I don't know, it drives good. I never actually made a video driving, actually driving this thing. I think it ended with the uh, paint and stuff. Uh, never really uh, finished it up. I want to make side panels, but uh, this is getting turbocharged anyway. We're going to throw a T3, T4 on it, uh, just because why not, and uh, use like a fuel management unit, like one of them rising rate regulators for the fuel and whatnot and whatever. But yeah, this is just sitting right now. Uh, this is the new and improved barn, I suppose. Uh, we're on, what is this, the uh, new side here. We got a bunch of junk up on the shelf there. This is an addition. Uh, there's part of Rich's uh, box there from when we did the cab swap on the truck. I'll put a thing in there to wash that. Um, but yeah, this is the pallet barn anyway. It's all, we got lights and everything. I still got the race mower here. This is also going to get work done once I get my flow bench together. We're going to do some porting on the heads and whatnot and all that. So this is the subject of the video anyway. This, uh, it's going to be a build series. Um, so, you know, AJ's got some videos on his uh, new YFZ there and that's going big bore and all that. Well, this is going 4 mil. Um, AJ made a couple videos for me on this, just short little ones when I first got it. Um, nothing in depth though. So, uh, the motor, uh, I'm doing the formal build, so I gotta rebuild it anyway. It's kinda, we got three, four years worth of riding on it, um, between what I've put on it and the previous owner has put on it, I suppose. Uh, he told me to rebuild it when I bought it, but I'm cheap, so I didn't. Um, it's not blown up or nothing, it's just got about 90 pounds of compression in both cylinders, so she's well worn, nice and rattly and all that stuff you know there's mystery noises all, all everything so we have 21 cc domes on a in pro design cool head we got a 35 mil pwk single carb i don't know i don't really want to go to dual carb just because this is easy but maybe um it's got a drive line lock up in it right now it's got paul turner mid-range pipes i don't i don't know i gotta see what kind of pipes i want to run i was gonna go to cpis but i don't know if i want to lose some low end for that more high end power. We'll see. Uh, it's got YFZ 450 brakes on it and uh, I don't know what else. A uh, bigger radiator and I don't know all this fancy junk on the handlebars and stuff that I would have never bought. But I didn't do, I haven't done anything to this since I bought it. I've just ridden it pretty much. I uh, just, he had, uh, I don't know, 18 something 18 cc domes or something around the high compression stuff when i bought it i just swapped the domes out when i got it and uh, that's all i've done to this haven't t haven't taken nothing apart really messed with the stator once because i thought it was that it was just loose wire in the coil um what else uh oh it's got uh fox podium x i shocks on it and all that expensive stuff that I would have never bought, but it's nice that I have it, I guess, and uh, the trail tech uh, coolant temp there. So yeah, we're going to get the motor out of here and get it apart and see where the noises are coming from and see how shot everything is. from an 80s Ford Bronco. It was free from the junkyard. A lot better than the hundred dollars for the real stuff, isn't it? got to pull the pipes off now and uh, then we're pretty close and it's just uh, chain motor mounts and uh, yeah get this thing out and I still got to build a stand for the motor I completely forgot I don't know if I'm gonna bother doing that right now but maybe okay we almost got it out almost got it out never had one of the part these are heavy motors <sighs> 
Come here. Oh, leak. Cool. Oh, there we go. It's out. Ben. Alright, here we go. Motor's out. Clean the bench up and we'll uh, maybe make a stand, but probably not, and we'll get it apart. Yeah, there we go. Alright, we got the motor. We're going to pull the stator cover off first and get the flywheel off and uh, see how muddy it is in here because I uh, creaked this thing just like a. What do they, what do they call it? A Lower. submarine, yeah. <laughs> Banshees are not submarines, according to HJR. I use mine as a submarine. Let's see what happens in here. Banshee flywheel. Banshee flywheel. <laughs> Only a little bit of a little bit of water in here too. Doesn't look too bad. More coolants coming up. Doesn't look too bad though. Oh, Mint. Oh. There we go. Mint. Lock. Like, I don't want to lock. I want to open. No, you have to swipe to make it. I wanted to open it so I could see if you're in frame. Yeah, hey, you're all good. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that. There we go. Man. All right. Let's get this intake off. This is the Trinity Stage Four intake with the Chariot adapter. I don't know what I'm gonna if the single carb's gonna really hinder hinder me with the four mil. I know people have done it. Uh, it may not be the best best thing, but we're gonna have to uh, see because I really don't want to go to dual carbs. I have the intake set up for dual carbs, but I don't want to because then I have to buy another set of jets. I already have one set of jets. So I have to buy another set of jets. And I gotta buy another car. I'd probably just run two 30, uh, 35s. Or something like that. Um, some people run the 39s. Single 39, anyway. On this, that seems like I won't have throttle response if I did that. So, let's pry on this the wrong way and see if we can get her out. Got it's a little wobbly. I think that yeah, I need you to hold. Oh. All right, we got our bolts out for these guys. Mint. Ooh, not mint. Pulling everywhere. Beautiful. What happened here? I haven't broken free yet. Oh. We're not gonna dump that there. We're gonna dump that over there. All right. cylinders. Well, oh, that porting's all in. I don't know if this will this will show up. I don't know how really good these GoPros are. Yeah, this is red line trail porting. There's no, there's not really any crosshatch left, but the bore's probably not that worn. Pistons are probably nice and nice and gone. I don't have a way to really measure these great I just have calipers. Yeah, the pistons are quite, uh, quite worn. So, with the approximators here, we're like 63.75. This should be a 64 mil bore-ish. So that's, I mean, these are going to be a little, a little different than 64, a little under. But that's a lot under. There we go. I thought we had Wiseco pistons. I don't know if that'll show up. There you go. Netch pistons. So these are probably cast pistons, Chinese pistons. Four years of hard riding on it. I was going to go make a stand for this and actually I uh, kind of got a stand done, but then I realized that I made a bolt on here. I don't really want that because that's the top half of the case. 
So then I was going to have to make a whole different stand and I just gave up. So no, no I didn't stand for now. I'll make one later. Anyway, I brought it up to the garage where I actually got air and uh, broke some, some of the big bolts free. This and behind the clutch and all that, but I threw it back together and you can see how this comes apart. So this is a drive line uh, lock up clutch. Um, this needs the extended cover. This isn't one of the newer uh, stealth style ones anyway. But uh, yeah, it's pretty simple really how these work. It's just got some weights which are just bolts really. And the faster this motor spins, the more the centripetal force pushes this. And all that does is push on, on the pressure plate here pushes the plates together harder so then you don't have to run super heavy springs to hold all the power. It makes it easy to pull the clutch. See they uh, ground them down and peened them over a little. It's kind of... don't really have to do that with these. Cause these you drill out the original rivets and uh, the original ring gear here bolts to your new billet uh, basket, but yeah, I don't know what's up with the, whatever this isolator is or something, it's kind of uh, coming apart, but we'll deal with it later. I don't know where we left off on this, but the heater's developed a bit of uh, vibration and uh, squealing, but that's fine, it should hold together, I hope. I think, well, the camera card ran out of memory, so I might have skipped a few steps. But anyway, this stuff's mostly gone. This gear I can't get off right now, so I'm just not going to worry about it. That yeah, heater's loud. But anyway, we're going to get these bolts out, these bolt nuts out, and we're going to split the cases and see how bad the tranny looks. Alright. The heater's still just buzzing away out back. Um, Alright, bolts are out, and oh, wow, look at how easy, alright, beautiful, man, these are stout little, little cases, I never looked, uh, never really even watched videos of people taking these things apart, never really looked at how they're designed or anything, huh, yeah, Alright, so, we got the cases apart, everything looks pretty good in here, uh, it doesn't look like it ever had a crank grenade or anything like that, it's all real clean in there, um, tranny and everything looks good, the shift forks, I gotta see what the spec is for the wear on them, but they measure like 4.85 millimeters, I assume they're supposed to be 5 maybe, I mean, who knows, they're all the same, so I'm not gonna really worry about that, probably just gonna replace the seals, the bearings all felt good. We're just going to clean it all up and do that. i got to look at the tranny a little bit closer still. But yeah, i just got to do a few little things with the cylinders and that. And we'll get the motors, well the cylinders sent out anyway. And the domes. And we'll get all our parts back and get all that ready. Now I just got to uh, work on the chassis. So every, every single bushing and bearing is worn out on the chassis. The uh, swing arm bushings, it's hard for me to hold the camera and move this, but the swing arm bushings are gone. The uh, rear axle bearings are loose. They're not what I would say gone yet, but uh, bushings in the A-arms are gone. These are the Alba ones. They have the Dalrin plastic or whatever they make them out of bushings. I might make some out of uh, bronze just so they last longer. Depends on how much it's going to cost, but... Yeah, I gotta take them apart, measure that up, and then, uh, really I want to uh, clean up the wiring harness, because this, this had a homemade, white, well, the red stuff I did, and I kind of cobbled it, because I never, it was in a rush, because we were going on a riding trip, and whatever, but I gotta fix that up, and, uh, yeah, paint the frame something, I don't know what, like I said, well, I think I said, I don't know. Modern steel metallic Honda paint because I have some laying around. I don't know how that would look, but I just don't want to want the white because it's high maintenance, and that's not what I do <laughs> at all. So 
we'll see how it comes out. I was going to do like Naruto Gray or something, but then I'm going to have to buy that paint. I don't want to do that, so. Yeah, there's part one of the Banshee build. Uh, the videos might be spaced out a little bit, but eventually there will be a video on taking uh, this apart and probably making some bushings and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, then I just got to send the motor out, and that will be a few weeks till I send it out, a few weeks till I get it back, and uh, throw it back together and uh, see what, what's going on.